I've got one more example sample problem for you for calculating the pH of a salt solution. Calculate the pH of 0.93 molar C6H5NH3Cl. That's a big molecule. The PKB, which that's a new, it's a new symbol for us. PKB of C6H5NH2 is 4.87. So this one, this one is pretty tricky. All right, so let's go back up and let's remember our steps one at a time. Step one, we're gonna write a reaction for the dissociation of, not KCN this time, we're gonna write a reaction for the dissociation of this complicated ionic compound. C6H5NH3Cl. Now you might be saying to yourself, oh, I have no idea how to dissociate this, this molecule into a cation and an anion. It's very intimidating. You have some hints, so you've got some things to help you. So you've got this, this particular structure right here, which is not an ion, it's an intact molecule. But that is giving you a hint that those atoms, C6, H5, N, H2, they belong together. They're connected to each other. Um, so that is taking care of, if we're looking at this guy, that's taking care of most of what we've got right here, C6, H5, N, H2 of the three hydrogens. Uh, another hint, you should be really recognizing chloride as a very common anion. So chloride ion as an anion should be something that you are pretty okay with seeing. And so if we separate the chloride ion off of this molecule, then um, that is going to leave the remaining molecule, C6H5NH3, so if we change this two, if we change it to a three, then it's not going to be a neutral molecule anymore, but it is going to be a cation because it's got that extra hydrogen on it. And so there is the structure of our cation and anion. Very tricky stuff, but I know you can figure it out. So that's our step one. And let's look back at what we did in the first example. Um, after we wrote the reaction for dissociation, we made an ice table. So let's do that. Let's make an ice table with this. Our initial concentration of C6H5NH3Cl was 0.93, and initially we have no products. We have a forward reaction here, which means that all of the 0.93 is going to dissociate because the stoichiometry is one to one to one we're going to be making 0.93 <clears throat> of each of our products and at the end we'll have no product no reactant left we'll have 0.93 of each one of our products so we've got that part done now let's see what's next um, so after we did that, step two, look at the products and decide which one is acidic, which one is basic. We've got to classify these guys. So we've got, um, starting with the cation, we've got C6H5 NH3+. Let's scroll back to our cations and see what that guy is. For our cations, Neutral cations are the ones that are in group 1A or 2A. That's not what we have. We don't have a group 1A or a group 2A. So that means that this cation is acidic. What about our anion, chloride? Let's go look at the anions. The chloride ion is one of our neutral anions. So the chloride is neutral.
and this tells us that the C6, H5, NH3, this is the component that is making the solution acidic. So that's what we need to focus on for the rest of this problem. Now that we've got that figured out, let's see what we're supposed to do next. Next thing we do, step three, we're gonna write a reaction for the, in this case, it's gonna be an acidic ion plus H2O writing a reaction for this ion and H2O. C6H5NH3 plus, always, plus H2O in equilibrium. We know that this is acidic. When it's acidic, one of our products is H3O plus, always, always the case. When we have an acidic reactant, we're gonna make H3O plus. And to figure out the formula of the other product, we're gonna ask ourselves, where that H3O plus come from? Our acidic ion scooted one of its hydrogens over to the water. And when that happened, it was left as C6H5NH2. There it is. We need to make an ice table for this guy right here ice table using the information from the first ice table that we made we have 0.93 of the c6h5 nh3 plus that's where that number comes from we don't care about water we had no h3o plus in that ice table and we also had no c6h5 nh2 in that ice table so those are zeros this is an equilibrium reaction, which means we don't know how much we're going to react. Minus x, plus x, plus x. Add equilibrium, 0.93 minus x, but you guys know we're going to assume x is small and we're going to call that 0.93. So there's our ice table. Now, let's see what we do next. We're going to solve for x and we're gonna use that to calculate the pH. To solve for X, we need an equilibrium expression. Is this a Ka or is it a Kb? We said that this is an acidic situation, so that means this is a Ka. Products, H3O plus times C6H5NH2 over reactant C6H5NH3. Fill in from the ice table. Up top we have x squared and on the bottom we have 0.93 and we need to know our Ka. Let's look back up to the problem. The problem tells us, not Ka, it tells us the pKb is 4.87. Let's write that down. pKb equals 4.87. So I don't think, I could be remembering wrong, but I don't think we've done anything with pKbs at all yet. Um, so let's talk, let's take a little side note and talk about how we're gonna get a Ka out of a pKb. So first of all, um, in the first thing I want to show you, Kb, that, no, that's not what I wanted to start with. Um, just like pH is the negative log of H3O plus and pOH is the negative log of OH minus, pKb is the negative log of Kb. And also we have a pKa and that is the negative log of Ka. So those are, are really, really similar. And you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna add the pOH up here too. pOH is the negative log <clears throat> of OH minus. Put it all on there. So, so that, that much of all that's super consistent. And then we've got another relationship right here with pH and pOH. pH plus pOH equals 14. We learned that relationship and we even derived that. Same thing down here. pKa plus pKb 
equals 14. And you could do that derivation if you wanted to. It's the exact same derivation as the pH thing. So here's these relationships that we have. And we're going to figure out, we're going to go from pKb all the way back to Ka, which is what we need. And there's a couple different ways you could do this, but here's how I want to do it. I like to use these plus this plus this makes 14 relationship. So I'm going to start by saying um, pKa is equal to 14 minus pKb. In this case, it's 14 minus 4.87, which is 9.13. And then I'm going to use my anti-log relationship. So um, same way that we can undo a pH equation, the Ka is 10 to the negative pKa. And again, that's kind of like OH minus is 10 to the negative pOH, or <clears throat> H3O plus is 10 to the negative pH. Same type of relationship. Ka is 10 to the negative pKa, and Kb is 10 to the negative pKb. So Ka is 10 to the negative pKa, which is 10 to the negative 9.13. And I'm just gonna leave it in this form for this problem. So I've got my Ka now, that wasn't too bad. I've got my Ka and I'm going to bring it up to the equilibrium expression, 10 to the negative 9.13. And now I can solve for X. So I'm gonna start by doing the 10 to the negative 9.13 and I get 7.4 times 10 to the minus 10. That times 0.93 and then take the square root. And that gives me X, which is 2.63 times 10 to the negative five. X is H3O plus which means it's very straightforward for me to get the pH. Negative log of my value of x, I get a pH of 4.85.